Well, hello. I'm so excited. I get to introduce to you one of my newest friends, but if you are on the replay right now, I want you to make sure that you comment below. I want to know where you're watching from. If you have questions for Abby, and I'm sure some of you are going to, I want you to leave those questions down here and Abby and I will be watching those questions, but we are glad you are here and that you're with us and just know that even though right now we're going to be doing all the talking, that we really do want to have a conversation with you. As you know, at Consumed Coaching, not only do we pride ourselves in excellence and, and we are unapologetically faith-based, we also think very highly our third pillar is to be personal. And so we want to get to know you. We don't want this just to be a one-way conversation. So when you get brave enough to leave a comment, please leave a comment because we want to know you. Um, Abby, I am so excited. Abby Smith has her own business and what she does, oh my word, is like my, I mean, this is like a going to be a treasure for me. Like I know God sent Abby into my life um, because she owns a company called True Treasure Organization where she helps people declutter and get organized. I it, funny thing is, I don't even think I shared this with you, but as you were talking and sharing a little bit, I know we, we met earlier and then we talked a little bit before the recording. Um, I used to love as a kid pulling out a, a drawer and reorganizing the drawer. Now my life has gotten a little crazy because I, I use my organizational skills and business coaching. And so it feels like a lot of times those same skills are so used up in another way that I have way too many junk drawers in my house, Abby. I'm just going to go ahead and, and and admit it because in that lack of time, I keep throwing things in a closet or throwing, and then it gets overwhelming. And then I want to be like an ostrich mama and throw my head in the sand and forget about it. So you are Jim, right? And, um, and so I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you. Yes. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited. Yes. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, about who you are and, um, you know, a little bit about your background and then what got you into organizing? Yeah. So, um, my name is Abby Smith. Like you said, um, I own true treasure organization in the Dallas Fort Worth area and, um, kind of just going back as a child, you know, similar, like you said, um, I wasn't, you know, perfectly organized kid because I don't think that exists necessarily. Um, but I joke looking back now, I think God had planted a seed early on. Um, I used to love playing like with doll houses and baby dolls, but I loved the setup process of it more than at the actual play of it. So I think that's kind of maybe where it started. Um, but then as I got older, I started just kind of realizing how much um, being organized was a benefit to me. So I just began, you know, reading as many books, watching videos, podcasts as I could, just learning different methods. Um, and then I began just kind of helping out friends and family um, and just realizing, you know, the impact that that had on them. And that's when I knew, you know, this is a gift that God had given me and that I wanted to share with other people through starting a business. I love it. I love it. As you were sharing the story with me before, one of the things that I found with a lot of people who God calls into a business is that um, not only did they see some of these gifts in childhood, but then they started recognizing things keep popping back up in their life. And of course, you were talking about the daycare and how they were also, you know, they would declutter and it would be something that brought you life. And then as you would help others, you saw the impact you would make in other people's lives. And that seems to be, you know, when we're helping people kind of discover, we do strategy sessions with people um, and they start to discover who they are and what God might be calling. It's actually something that's been kind of trickling through their whole life. And I was like, Oh, she's right in the middle of doing what God's called her to do. Cause she's got all those checkoffs that I normally look for, um, in that. Now you also have a scripture verse that, um, that kind of, leads the way, maybe a guiding light for what you do. Can you share that with us? Yeah. So um, kind of a funny story. You know, I knew that I had wanted to do this business for several years, but it just, it didn't feel like that was, you know, the right time to start it. I was kind of waiting just to feel, you know, that nudge from God that this was the right time. Um, you know, so I, I was always thinking about, you know, different things, different names. 
Um, and then one day I was reading through Matthew and I had read this passage several times before, and I guess it just never had clicked until that moment. But I read um, Matthew 6, 19 through 21, where it talks about not storing up treasures here on earth. Um, and then for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And it kind of clicked at the moment. I was like, I know, you know, organizing and decluttering, it helps people, you know, physically, mentally, financially, but this has biblical implications too. And so that's um, kind of where the name came from and how that all began. I love that. I love that. There will your heart be also. Whoa, that's huge. So I was telling you, and I never put this really together with the power of having um, an organizer in our hip pocket, right? In our resource list as a coach. But one of the things that um, I have found when I'm coaching, especially high performance um, business coaching, um, that some of my high performance people will get in a place where they're just like, I just, I can't think, I seem to be confused. They feel stuck, all of that. And one of the things that I will ask them to do is I need you to turn your camera around on your phone and show me your working space. And almost, almost 100% of the time, they have cluttered up their working space. And because of that, and so I ask them, I need you to spend some time the next 24, 48 hours to declutter or for some of my, they hire someone to do it, which is exactly what Abby does, right? And so they hire someone to come in and help them, you know, have some sort of organization, file folder system or what have you. And it almost, almost 100% clears, like they're able to function because they have, they, they've got some organization to their functioning, right? Um, and, you know, I never really thought about it, but I'm sure, you know, it, you think about moms who just had babies, right? Or you've had a life change. Maybe you've gone to work and you haven't been working, or maybe you've come home from working, whatever it is. I would imagine that anytime there's a life change, because all of a sudden the railroad tracks you've been running on are different, that clutter can happen. And then next thing you know, you're finding yourself wondering, did I make a bad decision? Or you find your, your head cluttered as well. Um, did you find that as well? Um, and that the outside clutter becomes the inside clutter. Yeah, it really does for people. And like you said, it's so easy to accumulate things. Um, and I always say, I think in this day and age, it's more difficult for us than it ever has been for society, just because we have the ability to accumulate so much with, you know, online shopping, anything we want can be delivered to our home and it piles up so quickly without us really even knowing, you know, what to do with it and how to handle it all. Um, and I think, you know, like you said, when you have clutter surrounding you, it begins to, you know, impact how you feel about yourself, um, I know a lot of people will feel, you know, guilty or almost even depressed. You know, how did I let it get like this? Mm -hmm. You know, I should know better than this, you know, that I should be more productive. Um, and especially like you were saying, you know, with entrepreneurs or really anyone that, you know, has a career that they're trying to excel in when you are surrounded by all of that in your workspace, you're focused on, you know, I can't find things. Um, you know, I can't think clearly because it's just surrounding me. And that's what you're seeing visually. Mm, wow. That's so big. You know, you just brought on online shopping and that being such a big thing. And especially in 2020, I can imagine, you know, more people are doing that than ever before. Um, and I find myself impulse shopping too, right? Because we have you know, you, we have social media and so-and-so says do this and so-and-so says do this. And whoever stops, we should, Abby, we really should. But um, I know you would probably preach this at me. If you're going to get something, get rid of something. I've said it to myself over and over. But instead, the box shows up, you unbox it, right? And next thing you know, you have multiple things that are not fitting in the closet anymore that I keep hiding when people come over. So, wow, I had not thought about the connection between having shopping at my fingertips as well as, um, which actually feeds the impulse shopping. Wow. Yeah. Mm. It's really interesting to think, you know, looking back at like, you know, mothers, grandmothers, a few generations ago, you know, people will always say, oh, you know, my grandma's house was so tidy growing up, or, you know, my mom always kept a tidy home, but 
we didn't have as much stuff back then and they didn't have that much stuff back then as we do now. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, again, as a society, we just have not learned how to process all of that. Yeah. You know, I find one fear. We didn't talk about this before, but I imagine you have to deal with it. Um, you know, I lost my father and of course that whole household of things and, and important things, um, having to go through that, trying not to get rid of things that are so important, but yet you already have a household in play, right? You have all of that going on. Um, and so that transition, um, what, how do you help somebody go through what really truly is a treasure and what really needs to be let go of? And I mean, how do you walk someone through maybe even some of that emotional part of that? Yeah, I think, you know, it definitely depends on the situation. Um, like you said, people going through, you know, a loss. I think letting go of possessions is almost part of the grief process. I think as time passes, it's easier to let those things go. Um, but I always just kind of tell people, you know, it's important to remember that the memories are in your head. They're not in the item. Um, so it's, you know, I totally understand keeping certain items. I have done that as well, you know, just because it brings us joy, um, you know, to have those things from those people. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's important to recognize too that, you know, the memories again are not in the actual item themselves. Okay. Um, and yeah. And then I think, you know, when dealing with your personal items, um, there's a lot of guilt that people deal with, you know, when they go to get rid of something, whether they feel like they spent too much money on it um, in the first mm -hmm. place, or they haven't used it like they thought they were going to, or maybe it was a gift from someone. Um, but it just, again, it kind of comes back to, you know, what do you need and what do you, you know, want to have for this stage of life? Um, and it's okay to learn from the past, you know, maybe you did spend more money than, you know, you wanted to, or you feel embarrassed about it, but just take it as a learning lesson. Um, and, you know, don't let that guilt sit with you and hold on to it just for that reason. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, my first thought is don't let the guilt, you know, build upon itself and become this snowball of, you know, where now it's affecting you even bigger. That's huge. And I can see me do that too. Like look at something and go, gosh, I bought that on impulse. And now I'm just going to toss it after I spent all that money. And, you know, I literally at times have had to just think, toss it as soon as it gets out of sight, it'll be fine. Just move on. Right. Do you want the stress of the fact I can't close that closet door or the fact that I'm paying for a storage building I don't really need um, which is now cutting into my budget and, you know, all the things I, I think I heard some statistics on how many storage buildings Americans have now. Um, and it's absolutely crazy, right? The storage building industry is huge because we're, I mean, I hate to say it, but we're all hoarders. It's not, it's not just, it's not just the people on TV, like in some way, shape or form, we've all done it. Right. So. Yes. So, yeah. So good. You know, I love the idea too, that you help people with systemize some of this stuff, like organize, organizing and systemizing. And as a coach, it's one of the things that we help people do is systemize some stuff. Um, and I think that the power of not just getting you to come in and, you know, get it all straight, but then give me some sort of system so that I can keep it straight, you know, that I can call you maybe twice a year, but not have to call you every month because it's gotten crazy again, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I like to set up, you know, systems. Everyone is different. Everyone thinks differently. Um, so I always just kind of take into consideration, you know, what is working for you currently, what's not working. Um, how can we take what is working and and create a, you know, system at all levels that works for you? Wow. That's so cool. Now you do work um, personally on site with people if they're local, if, and, um, and so we'll tell them how they can get in touch with you, but you also do some virtual things. Can you talk about that a little bit, just in case someone's listening, they're far away, but they're like, I need Abby in my life. Yes. Yeah. So, so much um, of what I do, you know, yes, on site, you know, do the physical stuff. Um, but in a way it is a lot of just kind of clutter coaching, you know, talking through, you know, just providing a different perspective, 
um, kind of working through the different emotions. Um, and that can all be done in a virtual setting as well. Awesome. Awesome. So how would they find you? Do you um, have socials in a website? Yeah. So I am on Facebook. Um, it's True Treasure Organization. And then I also have a website, which is just going to be truetreasureorganization.com. I love that. I love that. All right. Spring is here, right? Easter's around the corner. Everybody's thinking spring cleaning. Can you give us a couple of tips to get started so that we can get prepared to call you in? Yes, absolutely. Um, so the first thing is start with one project. I think a lot of times people get really excited. Again, the whole spring cleaning thing, like I'm just going to do this all in one weekend. Wow. Um, that's yeah. not, you know, not practical and you're just going to get frustrated with yourself. So I always say just start in an area um, that's not going to have those high emotional items. And for a lot of people, this might be kitchen cabinets, junk drawers, um, just easy areas you can quick make decisions, you know, things you don't need, things you don't want anymore. Um, and then once you start with that and kind of see the progress that will motivate you um, to be able to touch some of those, you know, maybe more difficult areas. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, that's, that's definitely step one. Um, and then step two is just, you know, get started. There's, you know, so many things out there today on social media, you know, these perfect looking closets. Um, <laughs> and you can, I mean, you can spend a ton of money on organizational products. And I think people get stuck on that sometimes like, oh, I need to have, you know, hundreds of dollars to make this beautiful pantry. Um, but in reality, I mean, the dollar store has some awesome containers and you'd be amazed just looking around your own home, things that you can reuse. Um, so I would always just encourage people, you know, you can upgrade later, but don't let the, the products be what holds you back in the first mm. place. So good. So good. Awesome. I'm taking notes. So okay, good. Started. Yes. I love that. So I'm just going to reiterate, cause this was so powerful. Start, start with one project. Don't get overwhelmed thinking I got to do it all in one weekend. And number two, don't start where there's high emotional um, you know, sorting or organization where the high emotion items might be. Um, we can get to that, but I, and I have seen that in my life too, that if I just get started, I can get to the harder things. So that's big. And don't let the product part of it hold me back thinking I can't do it until I buy all this stuff, which of course, there you go. The impulse buying again, I would be watching TikTok, And next thing I know, I have to have $1,500 worth of product to get started. Check the dollar store because uh, you are correct. It carries a lot of really awesome stuff that you're like, I didn't know this was here. So, and besides it's in a closet, no one's going to see it. Right. So, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It functions the same as, you know, the $30 container. Yes. I love that. I love that. Well, Abby, this has been a blessing and also great to get me started on my, on, on my spring cleaning and I do live locally to you, so I will be calling um, and uh, maybe maybe training us on a few things uh, to um, maybe make our summer a little bit a little bit easier. Um, so repeat again how people can find you, and um, I, I look forward to seeing um, what God does. Yes. You can find me again. Um, it's going to be truetreasureorganization.com or you can check me out on Facebook um, at True Treasure Organization on there as well. Awesome. Well, I want to hear, this was some good stuff, you guys. And um, and if you are a coach who is watching me um, or you are a kingdom entrepreneur who serves clients where um, Abby can be of service, um, reach out, connect, collaborate. Um, if you're, if you have a podcast, I think she'd be amazing for you mama podcasters, right? So talking to those new moms, um, and if you're going through a transition and you need some help, you know, we're here for you. So thank you so much, Abby. And, um, we will see you guys next time. Um, we bring on a kingdom entrepreneur. So I always do ask this last question. Let me ask you this. Was it scary stepping out on your own? And what was the trigger that said, okay, because one of our statements is calling over comfort, right? What was that trigger that just gave you the courage to say, I'm doing this? Yeah. 
Um, I would say, I think going into it, you know, I have degrees in business. I had done this research for several years. This is how I want to do it and everything. Um, but I definitely, I'm a warrior um, and I'm also a perfectionist. And so that's not always a good combination. Um, and it kind of got to the point where I had felt that nudge from God. I was talking to family and friends about it, you know, kind of trying to put everything together. And it kind of got to the point where I was just dragging my feet out of fear. You know, I wanted everything to just be absolutely perfect going into it. Um, and then finally, it was my husband and my mom, actually, that they both kind of pushed me and said, you know, look, when you start a business, it's not going to be perfect, you know, coming out the door and, you know, you just need to start. And I think I was kind of frustrated a little bit with them at the time, if I'm honest, yes. um, you don't understand, you know, I have to have it just absolutely perfect. Um, but I went ahead and started and honestly, just God using them to kind of push me out of my comfort zone and get going was exactly what I needed. Um, and I've, you know, really learned to just enjoy the growth process um, and, you know, the development process. And so that would be my advice to any, you know, new entrepreneur that feels like God has called them to do something, just go ahead and get started. Right. Amen. Go husband and mama. I love yeah. that. A little bit of push, a little bit of push. It makes me think about the mama eagle and the babies, right? She starts making the nest uncomfortable and then finally pushes them out and makes them use their wings. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. Well, I hope you have a team like that too, that when they hear a God call in your life, that uh, you've been intentional about building a team that believe in you and believe in you enough to give you a little push and maybe frustrate you a little bit like Abby was um, because that's a good team. I love it. All right. See you guys next time.